<laughs> Friends, I like to end my speeches with that gesture because I am a joyful person. Yes, but this is a tough message. So I want you to know we will end on a joyful note, <laughs> but bear with me <coughs> as I discuss the F word. <laughs> Forgive! <laughs> <laughs> Forgiveness can change your heart. Amen. While I'm out and about these days, I see so many sad, even angry faces. To me, that's the sign of a troubled heart. A troubled heart happens when life happens. We go through life. We might get ooey gooey when we see a baby smile or puppies playing. But we can get agitated when we face a wrong decision or bad news. But my concern is that too many of us are unable to release that anger, fear, or pain. And we carry a troubled heart. Now there is a proven, powerful antidote for a troubled heart, and that is forgiveness. <clears throat> This is the tale of two hearts. A troubled heart who refused to forgive and a formerly troubled heart who now enjoys the freedom of forgiveness, a change of heart. My mother died of unforgiveness. All her life, she hated her brother. She would not even speak with his daughter, who called her years after he died. Mother, why? Well, I don't want her to know what a terrible person her father was. thing he said or did, but the hatred dissolved her gut, mm. just like Drano dissolves a clog. That's right. <laughs> she became inoperable, and she lived the rest of her life in pain, either physical or emotional. Hospice had a brief memorial for her. The pastor asked each of us to say a few words. When we finished, his comment was, well, she was in control. But I have just recently learned that people who live with hatred and rejection often control those around them. Mm -hmm. And that's so they can prevent further hatred and rejection. I was just like my mother. I was judgmental, I was critical, and I complained about everything. I <coughs> carried a troubled heart. <coughs> my husband and I were buying a bigger house. We were going to start a family. Just days before the closing on the house, I found him with another woman. My troubled heart shattered. My anger and pain exploded. How am I going to live through this? Well, he was long gone, but my pain persisted. A good friend at work who knew me well, her name was Sue, took me aside. Lynn, you have to change. The pain and anger, it's hurting you, not him. 
You have to forgive. Forgiveness will give you freedom. <laughs> oh, Sue blessed me. <clears throat> she taught me how to restore my heart. She convinced me to forgive. I forgave my ex-husband. I released the rejection. I replaced the pain and anger with peace and contentment. I found the freedom of forgiveness. Amen. Yes. Now, folks, if I can, so can you. That's right. We just have to remember forgiveness is not accepting right. the offense. Rather, it's just acknowledging it and putting it in our past. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is a decision. That's right. It's a choice. That's right. The result of forgiveness is the feeling of freedom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now that's because our feelings will take on the characteristics of our thoughts and our behavior. Mm -hmm. That's been studied and proven. As we think and act, our feelings will follow right along, right? And deny any pain the power to poison your life or the lives of those around you. Forgive. Now here's how we do that. First you think it. Just make a mental commitment to forgive and then express it. Now that could mean talking with the person who hurt you. That could be powerful. But if that's not going to work for you, tell a trusted friend. But claim that forgiveness out loud. And the feelings of freedom will follow. Amen. Friends, life is not about how much others have hurt us. Mm -hmm. Life is about how we share our love with those around us. Oh, no, just wait a minute. <laughs> be sure, be, <laughs> be sure to give yourself the blessings of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Be blessed, yes! Yeah. Yeah. Now, Joni. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.